In wireless communication, the classical architecture is the cellular network, where we deploy a number of base stations, and each user is associating with one of them and get their service. And that divides the world into cells, the areas where you are served by a particular base station. In the recent research literature, people have instead looked at cell-free networks. And the idea here is that you deploy a number of access points scattered over the coverage area. Each of them are connected over a front hall, which is connections wired to a central processing unit. And that one is controlling all of them. And the idea here is that all these access points are serving all of the users in this area jointly. So there is no concept of cells. And in particular, this has been known as cell-free massive MIMO. And massive MIMO is a technology which is usually meaning that we have a lot of antennas and a lot of users. And here we have very many access points, so there's also many antennas. We serve also a large number of users, but it's supposed to be fewer than the number of access points. It's also called massive MIMO because it's based on coherent joint transmissions. So these antennas are transmitting jointly in the downlink and receive the signal in a joint fashion in the uplink. We also utilize the methodology for massive MIMO in terms of how to analyze the performance and utilize favorable propagation. And if you're reading the IEEE Transaction Wireless Communications, you might have found two of these early works from 2017 on this topic. However, in this video, I will talk about a brand new paper, making cell-free massive MIMO competitive with MMC processing and centralized implementation, which is published in the IEEE Transactional Wireless Communications in January 2020. In this paper, they are making three main contributions that I would like to mention. The first one is that they introduce a taxonomy of how the uplink processing can be organized in a network like this. So we have this access point and we have the central processing unit. And we can distribute the processing between these points in different ways. At level four, which is the most advanced one, every access point is just sending everything that it knows over the front door to the central processing unit, which puts them together and operate the system in the best possible way. At level two and three, there is some pre-processing being done at each access point. It, for example, estimates channels and making soft estimates of the uplink data. And then it sends that over the frontal to the central processing unit that is putting it together. And at level three, it puts it together in a way where it know how good the different estimates are. And at level two, it just fuse everything together without that side information. Finally, at level one, each user is only served by one access point, so it becomes a bit like a cellular network. The second contribution is that the users are making a strong case for using something called MMSC processing. Previously, in the cell-free massive MIMO literature, people have been using maximum ratio combining, which means that when you are at this point receiving a signal from two users, when you are focusing on the laptop over there, you are directing your hearing in the direction where this user is and uh, you ignore the existing interference. However, in this paper, they are considering another known method called minimum mean squared error combining and they're making the case that even if you have only one or a few antennas at this access point, it makes sense to direct your hearing so that you are balancing between the signal strength and interference that comes in from that direction, which is illustrated by this beam pattern here. Finally, the authors are comparing a cellular network with these four different implementation levels. And here they are showing the spectral efficiency in bits per second per hertz. And there's a cumulative distribution function, which is saying use at different location, get these random variations in the spectral efficiency. This solid black line is for a cellular network. And there's large deviations depending on if you're at the cell edge or at the center of the cell. Here we have level one, two, three, and four. And we see that all of them are beating the cell network when it comes to the worst use of the network, those with unfortunate channel conditions. And that is sort of the selling point for cell-free, improve for the weakest users. However, the authors are also pointing out that the most advanced level four, the centralized one, is having by far the best performance. And they also are claiming that you would be giving the lowest frontal signaling by doing that type of implementation, which is a bit counterintuitive. And if you would like to know more, I recommend you to read this paper in the IEEE Transactional Wireless Communications.